Alright folks, you're ready to begin. Let's do this. If you are currently giving a demo, stop. <laughs> we want everyone to pay attention, give our uh, presenters and people making announcements their fair due. Uh, so welcome to SVVR meetup number 20. We have a new location. Uh, thanks very much to Highland Partners. It's a beautiful rooftop location. It'll be pretty sweet. Uh, so we'll get uh, some growing pains here, getting used to a new location, but it's uh, working out pretty nice. So uh, welcome everyone. Um, so we're going to start with some announcements, but before that, uh, Carl and I want to give some serious thanks uh, about the SVVR conference. How many people here went to the SVVR Expo number two? Nice. All right. Very good. Um, yeah, we're so thrilled. Uh, there was a, it's a ridiculous amount of growth exponential, looks like, and a big new space. Um, at the uh, at the conference and uh, what was it uh, 100 exhibitors 1400 or 1400 Over 1400 yeah, attendees. attendees it was uh, really really crazy and we're so thankful for your support for coming out um, and preserving preserving that same energy uh, from the first time around which was uh, one of the things that was so so very special about the first expo that we had at the uh, the history museum in Mount Review so uh, thank you all very much uh, for your support on that I don't know if you had Anything to add to that, Carl? Yeah, I just wanted to give an extra thank you to everyone who volunteered. We had a ton of volunteers from the community. Thank you all. It was We couldn't have done it without you. And yes, we're looking forward to going even bigger and better next year. We're already planning next year, so we'll see you there. <laughs> Excellent. Let's give a round of applause for all the volunteers. Yes. Yes. Sweet. Excellent. Uh, so for those of you that might not know me, I am known as Cymatic Bruce within the VR community. I'm Bruce Wood, and I'm developer relations at Altspace VR. Uh, I've been involved in this VR resurgence from the very beginning, and it's been a wild ride, and it's getting wilder every, every hour. Uh, so this is uh, a pleasure to see you all here, and I'll be your MC for uh, tonight's event. So it'll be really, really cool. Uh, here we go. Uh, for those of you that might be interested, I brought a perception neuron with me, which I'll be setting up after the presentations. Uh, so that'll be kind of a cool thing to check out. Not a build or anything. We don't have Altspace working with it yet. That'll be soon. Uh, but if you want to see what that's like, uh, that's great. And if you have questions about the Vive, we just got ours in a few days ago, which I also did not bring because there's like 100 of them in the world. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have questions about that, I can totally answer those for you as well. I've had a little bit of time messing around with it and uh, it's been pretty sick so far. Uh, lovely. So let's dive ha, right into announcements, uh, starting with SoCal VR. Sorry, sorry. Oh, let's, oh my goodness. Let's start with Alex from Highland Capital. They are our hosts. They've provided oh. the food. Let's give Highland Capital a big round of applause. I don't want to keep you from announcements, but we just wanted to say thank you so much for coming to our, uh, our wonderful rooftop here. You know, my name's Alex Tausick. I'm one of the partners here at Highland. We're an early stage venture firm. We've been around for about 27 years, um, bi-coastal as well as offices in uh, London, Geneva, and Shanghai. And all we do is invest in early stage technology companies and VR uh, and AR as well. Uh, but VR mostly is something we're incredibly excited about. We're actually investors in both Leap and Jaunt. So it's sort of like all in the family uh, this evening for these presentations. So. Um, you know, and we're, we're continuing to spend time in the space, so if there's stuff you guys are working on that you're excited about, feel free to reach out to me or any of my other partners. Uh, we're wandering around this evening. Uh, one of them is holding his hand up in the back, that's Patrick, uh, but there are others as well. So um, thank you so much. We'll let you guys get to your thing and uh, have fun tonight. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, next up is SoCal VR. Uh, are we just talking about that, Carl? Is there anyone here yes. from SoCal VR? No? Yes. Um, yes. Carl's no. going to talk about it. Yeah. Come, Carl. <laughs> Ooh. All right. All right. So, yes, as some of you may know, uh, many of the Southern California VR meetups, like Orange County VR, Long Beach VR, San Diego VR, all really great guys. There are our, our sister groups from down south. Um, they've all banded together to do a Southern California VR conference and expo. Um, it's a one day event on a Sunday at UC Irvine. Er, something Irvine. It's in Irvine. Um, it's general admission is free. They have a VIP ticket that gets you early access. Um, 
use the code SVBR for 50% off that. It's also very cheap, very affordable. Um, they're, they're awesome guys just doing this for the community. And all, um, I believe some other people in this room are speaking. So um, it should be awesome. I encourage you all to check that out. Yes, SoCalVR.com, sorry. Yes. SoCalVR.com and also want to add their very developer-centric group. So if you're yes. from a new company or a startup that needs to recruit, I also recommend going down there uh, as part of the reason that um, I'll be there too. There's uh, very developer-heavy with uh, that group of guys that are doing stuff down there. So SoCalVR.com, check it out. Uh, that is next, July 12th. Yeah, that's next Sunday. Sunday, the July 12th. Next Sunday, yeah. Already? Damn. Okay. Uh, next, Burning Man. Who Who is coming up for Burning Man? All my Burning Man crew. Yeah, come on, Shannon. Who else is coming? Who if else you is don't all be have beards, I know we have more be people in the group because we saw them. We have, oh, yes, we have Dara. Uh, where's Chris Miranda? He's going to be there. He's not here yet. He's not here yet. He's being fashionably late. Yeah. Anyway, the mic, uh, use that mic. Right. And you can You can talk. Yeah. So Shannon case, is the guy. I'm the guy. Uh, so in case you guys haven't heard yet, we're going to we're going to have a VR camp at Burning Man this year. So the idea is to set up a, basically a small expo hall, two two forty foot long expo tents sealed off from the elements and the wind and whatnot, with all kind of demo stations. Uh, so if you have any any content or hardware or software you want to have demo there, let me know and we'll have people there to present throughout the course of the week. There's seventy thousand people in attendance at Burning Man, so it's a good opportunity to you know, spread the word of VR to everyone. We're also gonna have a 40 foot or 30 foot by 20 foot screen with projection stuff and an opportunity to, to display cool content from 360 video companies and stuff like that. So uh, there's a website, it's bmanvr.com. There's a Facebook group. We're about to launch a, uh, a new Kickstarter next week. So if, you, if you're not coming, you know, please contribute anyway because we could really use the money. Like, the way I look at it is we'll have it as a platform we can use from year to year. You know, next year we'll have VR camp with the latest and greatest stuff. So I think there's 30 people so far. Yeah, that are camping there, with us. 30 something people 30. in the camp. Yeah, plus or minus. It'll be, it'll be my first time at Burning Man. I'm super excited. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect. I'm gonna wear clothes. I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about him. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm super excited. No, I, we're we're going to be there. We're going to be helping however we can, and I encourage all of you to check it out if you can. I know it's hard to get tickets, but uh, yeah, if it should be an awesome that's time. Into VR that wants to camp with us, you're welcome. I just need a list with you know email name, email addresses, and names, and so we can make, make sure to allocate enough space. But it's going to be a VR fest. Yes. All right. Cool. Awesome. No, yeah, Dara. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, hi, I'm Dara. I'm uh, Shannon. Uh, Shannon and I are organizing it together. I just want to say real quick with the Kickstarter, we're going to have lots of rewards coming up. Even if you can't come to Burning Man, we're going to have a documentary about the camp and its process and Burning Man in general. And one of our big prizes is going to be an all exclusive paid trip to Salt Lake City to see the void uh, firsthand, which is before really anybody else. Uh, that's going to be a huge prize, with a huge opportunity. We have lots of prizes, bandanas, mugs, uh, I think it's stickers. the SPVR 2016, I think. Yes, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so, yes. yeah. So it's going to be a great opportunity. See, come, look, look out for the next week or two. Uh, like plenty of surprises along the way. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a lovely night. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, next up, let's get uh, VRcade up here. I have some new stuff they're showing off in Milpitas, which is very exciting. So I have Ivan from VRcade. Let's welcome him to the stage. Hey, everybody. I'm Ivan Blaustein from VRcade. We're based up in Seattle. Uh, VRcade is our entertainment and gaming uh, division of VR Studios. We also have VR Design, which is our architecture, engineering, and construction industry division. Uh, pretty exciting. We just launched our first public installation of the VRcade system here in Milpitas at the Dave & Buster's there, their flagship location. Uh, Milpitas is like just north of San Jose, if you don't know. Um, we're pretty excited about it. It's you know our first public installation and uh, you can go play it now. It's wireless full motion virtual reality. Uh, we have 15 feet by 15 feet, which is really a super small version of our system. 
technology is scalable to about 15,000 square feet. We want to have you know, eight people running around a large warehouse soon, but uh, this is just one player at a time, 15 feet by 15 feet. Um, about five minute experiences, it's a blast. Um, I really hope you guys check it out. We're open Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays right now. And uh, if you want more information about it, come talk to me or vrcade.com. Thanks a lot for having me. All right, for the people in the back, is this better? Yeah. People in the front, probably not so much. Is this better? Can you hear me? Yeah? All right. Great people in the back. Fantastic. Um, next up is uh, 2015 Proto Awards. Uh, we have some information about that. Looks like submissions opened yesterday and they're running until July 15th. I think Carl has more info about that, or is that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, okay. <laughs> so it, it was awesome last year. That's all I'll say. It was a lot of fun. It was kind of wacky. The, the guy, I forget his name, from, vir from virtual the show, Silicon guy. Valley was there. Yeah. The host, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it was like the Academy Awards, but for VR. Yeah, so it was uh, really cool last year. Uh, what happened is that uh, they held the awards in the same building that the first Academy Awards happened. It's uh, the same time Oculus Connect happens down there in L.A. Uh, in the Hollywood area. So very, very cool. Uh, it was a very professionally done award show. Uh, some really cool prizes. Lots of people got uh, like an NVIDIA 980s out of it and stuff like that. Some uh, very, very interesting performances from like virtual guy or something like virtual boy vir the retro dude dressed boy. as retro boy or yeah, something was kind of insane, but it was a little <laughs> a little crazy uh but it was very cool so uh, make sure to check that out the proto awards uh put in your submissions for the best vr experiences for 2015 right. and last uh, year uh, olivia jt our own french ambassador uh, won the uh best uh uh, visual, best uh, visuals, yeah. Uh, something like that. Art, artist, art direction, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, um, that, I think that was the first time that we all saw Tilt Brush. Who they've now been acquired by Google, so that's a good place to find up and coming, exciting experiences. Definitely worth checking out if you're going to Oculus Connect anyway. Yeah, right absolutely. <laughs> Definitely worth your time. All right, and I believe Full Dive isn't here yet, right? The guys um, from Full Dive here. Oh, Full yes. Dive. Yes. All, right. All right, excellent. Uh, so we so have I'm, a uh, yeah, Kickstarter that's coming any day now, right? Yeah, very, very, very soon. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hook that up. Are you HDMI? Uh, yeah, HDMI. While we're transitioning and getting things hooked up, do we have any questions? E3 just happened. I was there. I've been messing around with the Vive and a Perception Neuron. Any questions about any of those things? The curiosity is gone from Silicon Valley, and I'm sad. <laughs> this is horrible. Oculus Touch is amazing. It's Oculus really Touch. Good. <laughs> Jesus. It's really good. How, how did I? I was just, I'm just expecting you guys to know. You're a VR enthusiast. Come on. Oculus <laughs> Touch. It was amazing. The demo was actually better than the tech, believe it or not. Yeah. It was an amazing, amazing <laughs> demo. When you get hit with a shrink ray, and then you sound like a chipmunk, and then she puts a giant puppet in your face, and you're like, no. Nah. It's great. All right. Um, I did not break it. That was also a very positive thing. I'm known for breaking demos, and this one functioned all the way through. Disappointed. All right, very good. Are you ready? Yeah. Yosin, welcome to stage, dude. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let's welcome. Hello, everyone. How is how's today? It's a great day. Two days before Four of July, so. Okay, I'm here to introduce my company. Um, we're called Full Dive. Basically, what we do is we turn a smartphone into virtual reality. Very similar to Google Cardboard, but this is what we do. So, um, our mission is to make virtually reality accessible to everyone. And we really mean it. One of the problems of virtual reality is that, one, people doesn't know it. Even in Silicon Valley, People doesn't know it. Not everyone knows that. And um, how do we tackle that problem? The first one is we are creating our, the headset for smartphones. Um, I can show you the product back there, right there in the stage. And um, we make this smartphone uh, focusing so that um, it's, it's price very affordable to everyone. We will sell it in Kickstarter for around $50 anytime soon. It works with every iOS and Android devices. The second one is we are also creating a controller. This is more of the software side. Um, we will be creating a small controller. Um, the product is 
also back there but basically this is like a mouse cursor instead of um, having like a mouse uh, this is the control for VR for smartphone VR and the third one is we have um, our um, bunch of mobile applications that you can download in Google Play right now it's available and we are also building the iOS version of it up till now we released this around four months ago and this is what we have we have around 200,000 downloads so far so I encourage you to try it out if you have a Samsung if you have an HTC go for it just look at full dive and it's I think the top five VR apps in the list right now so uh, that's um, uh, we are looking for fundings we're also um, looking for people who wants to join our team we're based in Berkeley and we just started this around eight months ago thank you everyone All right, uh, just a, f a few things before we get started with our presentation. Tunke is here. He is from Cyberith. Uh, raise your hand, yes, wave. Yes, very good. Uh, he is going to be in the Silicon Valley for a couple months, uh, from what I understand. Uh, and if you haven't seen the Cyberith Virtualizer, it's a uh, basically standing locomotion, actually physical walking uh, input device for VR. Uh, it's very interesting. They're at E3 and a uh, very popular booth there. So. Uh, definitely have a talk with them if you have questions about Cyberith. Uh, All the way from Austria. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So should we open it up to anyone in the community that's not on our list that has announcements? I believe, Jeff, you have something to announce, right? <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always ready to announce something. Yeah, we'll open it up. If you have a very quick announcement, we'll do that, and then we'll move right into presentations. There you go, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm Jeff with Boost PC and the announcement. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the announcement is I haven't grown anymore today. Uh, <laughs> uh, upload upload VR's demo day is July seventh, July thirteenth. Uh, Boost PC is a sponsor, and and I'm also doing the work to promote it. So pretty good deal for them. Um, it's free for companies to come. We're investing in a company there on stage, and we encourage all developers and companies to attend, as well as all VR enthusiasts. So that's it. Awesome. Thank you. I'll be your Vanna White. Oh, very good. <laughs> all right. And also, uh, just uh, quickly, we'll announce uh, we'll be doing some giveaways. We have three Gear VRs. That's right. Three Gear VRs. Ooh. Gear VR 2s for the S6. For the not S6. include the S6, unfortunately. The S6 is not inside. Don't get too excited. But, but still pretty exciting. <laughs> but it's still awesome. You will, should still get somewhat excited. Phone plan, right <laughs> <laughs> plan not included. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing that giveaway, so uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah, you should have gotten a raffle ticket on your way in. If you didn't, um, Nana will be over here shortly, and she'll be able to give you the raffle ticket. Um, yes, so yes, we'll, we'll uh, raffle these off after the presentations. And we also have uh, Google Cardboards. We have enough for everyone, we think. <laughs> Um, so there should be enough for everyone to take one. So um, we're going to put those out after, right when the demos start. Um, please just take one. If, if when you leave there's still some left over, then feel free to take more. But let's uh, try to let everyone get one. Um, please take please. the Google Cardboards. Yes. <laughs> take them. Give them to someone that doesn't know any better, please. <laughs> I beg of you, please. Nice. We're very thankful to Google for providing these to us. We're very thankful to Google. Hi, Google. Hi. We love you. Um, Google Cardboard is the gateway to VR. It's what gets people excited. So you should, if you're thinking, Google Cardboard, I have an Oculus Rift 4500. No. Dude, get, grab a cardboard and give it to your mom. She will love it. She'll look at 3D pictures all day and she'll be like, my son is Australian. So make sure to do that. Google Cardboards are so useful. We need more people to know about VR. Very good. All right. Uh, so now my stand-up act is done, and we're going to move on to presentations. Here we go. Uh, we're going to uh, start off with uh, Cinematic VR, author Van Hoff, the CTO of Jaunt. Uh, there we go. I'm going to make his way up. We're going to get him hooked up. Um, so Jaunt has been doing some really, really amazing work 
uh, to f move cinematic VR forward and uh, that type of experience. So that's great. So we're going to hear about the latest from them, uh, and the latest announcements, and uh, what they've got cooking. So let's welcome Arthur to the stage. False start. He's still getting ready. So once again, anybody curious about the amazing things I mentioned, please ask a question. Anyone? Bruce, did you get to try? Did you get to try? <laughs> what 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 I'm most excited about? The the what I'm <laughs> Google cardboard. <laughs> what I'm most excited about is uh, that there there's now a just this kind of standard of two controller input for VR now, which is exciting. There's been like this wild wild west of input for a long time, and now. The Morpheus is two controls you hold in your hand. The Vive is two controls you hold in your hand. The Oculus is two controls you hold in your hand. And Six Sense is two controls you hold in your hand. So there's going to be a lot of great design around this, uh, kind of a unifying factor. So that made me very excited. Uh, the most exciting thing about E3 was definitely the Oculus Touch demo. Everything paled in comparison. That demo was amazing. Uh, they did a fantastic job there. So, yes. Question. Uh, the consumer release, uh, how different from Crescent Bay? Um, so they've had a, uh, a couple different iterations of Crescent Bay. And so the one I tried with the Touch, uh, touch was not the CV1, but actually was our latest Crescent Bay. Uh, and it looked very nice. Um, but um, yeah, it was the one I think, uh, I don't, I think it actually had the mic in there actually built into it as well. So it was pretty close to CV1. It was beautiful. I mean, as far as... Uh, yeah, the screen door's gone, uh, the tracking is excellent, I uh, didn't lose uh, head tracking at least. Uh, I was able to lose uh, hand tracking by hiding the controller behind my hand, uh, or behind my body, but uh, yeah, it was uh, fantastic, so. Cool. Ready? All right, uh, we're gonna move on. Let's welcome once again, Arthur Hall, here we go. Hi there, um, I'm Arthur, I'm CTO of John. Uh, we're, we're in the building right over there. Uh, this is our VC, Alex. He gave us lots of money. He's a, re he's a really nice guy, I like him. Um, I'm also somewhat excited, I have an S6, and I have a raffle ticket. Um, so, I'm first going to do something very challenging, and I'm going to try to play a video on a very small screen using a projector outdoors. Now I want that to be. On. Is it? Well, I want to. Well, maybe I can use this instead. Um, so I'm going to try to play a little video. <laughs>
Cool. Um, so that was a little bit of an overview of some of the fun stuff we're working on. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of startups, and this one is definitely one of the most fun experiences where you get to combine technology and entertainment. And my mom understands what I do, which has never happened before. <laughs> Um, so today what I want to do, because you guys obviously all know what cinematic VR is and what John does, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, um, but I'm going to just give you a status update of all the things we've done since the last time we talked, which is maybe six months ago. Uh, so what happened this year? So one of the things that happened was that we announced John Studios, and John Studios um, is a, an effort to create a partnership with Hollywood. So we're opening a studio in L.A., and Cliff Plumer, who was, the, uh, who was the CEO of Digital Domain, is heading it up. And it's kind of a genius bar for, for uh, cinematic VR. So what we're doing there is setting up a team that is going to help the creative community in Hollywood produce cinematic VR experiences. So it's not a studio like in the traditional sense of the word, word where the states where you do productions yourself, but it's more a partnership with the creative community. Um, that's going very well. We've actually been producing a lot of content. Uh, just to give you an idea of the content that we have in the uh, Play Store today, here's just a few samples of it. I'll, go, I'll, I'll touch on a few of them. We did a project with the North Face, which you saw some of the footage in the video as well, where we went to the Moab and, and strapped our, our camera, which is right here, on a drone, a big commercial drone, and flew it over you know, lots of mountains. There were base jumpers, there were climbers. It's a great experience, and it's actually working very well. The North Face is actually showing this in most of the North American North Face stores, where the customer they, with a the Gear VR can actually experience being in the outdoors before they buy their outdoor clothing. It's kind of an interesting concept. Uh, we also did a partnership with, with Revolt, which is uh, um, uh, uh, Diddy's uh, company, um, P. Diddy, what is, whatever his name is nowadays. Um, so here's, a, here's our camera. It's hard to see a recording a concert at Big Sean in L.A. Uh, we also did a partnership um, with uh, Paul Feig, which is Other Space. It's, a, it's kind of a, a red dwarf for, for um, online viewing. It, so we did a, a VR, VR version of that, which is really cool, you can download. And then we did, um, we did a, a partnership with Brandon Latch. And Brandon is a, is a well-known YouTube VR, YouTube video maker that does a lot of you know, fun uh, projects where he combines you know, video and CG. And uh, this was our first attempt of actually inserting computer graphics into video and creating a, a believable experience. It's kind of an alien that arrives, and then the FBI shows up and tries to shoot him. It's kind of fun. Um, but we've been at lots of other places. Here we are at the Pride Parade last weekend. Uh, here we are at some sports event in Cleveland. No idea what that is. <laughs> this is some band of old dudes in Levi Stadium. Never heard of them. Um, and this is our new app. So we have, we have apps in the Play Store for Android, for Android, but we've recently also added some apps for iOS. Um, and this is actually a cool one where you can select multiple videos. You can go download it today. Um, we're very proud of being able to support uh, iOS, although there's not official support f for cardboard for iOS, but it still, it still works well. Um, on top of that, Besides the iOS app, we've done a lot of work on a camera. And you, you may have heard recently that Google announced some kind of camera partnership with GoPro. Unfortunately, they, they are not here today because I would have loved to have seen that thing in, in real life. We've been building those things for, for the past two years. And we've learned a lot about uh, how, to, how to build GoPro-based cameras. Mostly that you, you know, GoPros aren't really designed for VR, so they're not optimal. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But last week we announced a partnership with Google where we are going to partner to produce the high-end content uh, with Google. And that's, uh, that's a quote from Clay where he's saying, you know, we've created some of the most incredible premium VR experiences together. So anyway, um, we've moved on since, since GoPro and we're now building our own camera. We've been working on this for the last year or so. And taken all the learnings that we had from 
using the GoPros and all the different configurations that we had and all the different, uh, we did a lot of field testing with that. And we've designed a camera that we call NEO. It's codenamed NEO. And here's a picture of it. Um, it's a camera that is designed from the ground up for VR. This is a professional grade camera. It has a large format sensor, which is much bigger than the GoPro sensor, which will, be, which will perform much better in low light situations. And, and that's important because in VR, you can't have lighting. So you can't really put big lights, bright lights around uh, to light up the scene because they'll be in the, in the picture. Um, so we wanted a sensor that works well with natural light. So we got a large format sensor. Um, it's a, it can do global shutter which is very important for fast moving objects. All the cameras are fully synchronized. Um, it has, can do uh, 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 time lapse as well as high frame rate recording. Um, and it, we've designed custom optics for making sure that it has the right angle, you know, uh, field of view for VR. We're very proud of this camera. And we actually worked together with uh, Lunar in San Francisco to design the, this camera because this camera is going to be on stage with a lot of famous people. It's going to be on the field. It's going to be in the stadium. It's going to be very visible. And um, so when we, when we engaged with Lunar, I gave them one bit of design direction. I said, look, this thing's got to look badass. <laughs> and I think they made it look badass, actually. Um, if you can't see the pictures very well, you should go online and search for Neo. It's actually pretty, pretty cool to see. Um, now, besides the camera, you also need a bunch of tools. Enough. The drone studio with an idea. We can give you a camera, we can give you expertise, we can give you best practices, tools, we give you software, we give you encoding resources, we give you everything you need to go to do a video production or VR production from end to end. Now, the tools that are needed in order to run our pipeline, you know, that we've developed. We've developed camera setup tools for doing camera configuration. We've uh, we developed a digital clapper, digital clapper board, which allows you to add an audio signature to your video so that you can later on identify which, which uh, take it was. We have a, an asset manager for uploading into the cl cloud. We have cloud rendering. So we, we have an Amazon-based cloud rendering pipeline that is sort of fully web-based, um, very scalable. We have post-production tools that plug into Nuke, to Final Cut, to After Effects. Um, we got a production player which you can use for preview. So if you're doing if you're doing editing, you want to make sure that it's going to look good. So we we have a, a production player for that. And then we have data analytics, which tell you about the usage, where people look, what the usage patterns are, et cetera. And of course, we have players on lots of different platforms. So today, we have Android, iOS. We have the Oculus 1, 2, 3, Rift. We, have the, uh, we just received our HCC 5. We're very excited about that, too. It's awesome. Um, we, we have a Morpheus. We're going to try to make work. We're going to work basically with any device, headset, player, cardboard, plastic, we don't care, uh, and make sure that our content will be available on that. So with that, I just want to reiterate that you know this has been a really fun ride. It's, 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 it's going great. We're, we're making tons and tons of progress, as you can tell. And um, you know I, I, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm hoping that we can continue to grow. By the way, if you're looking for a job, come and get my card. We're always looking for good people. We're right in downtown Palo Alto right now, and we have money from this guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to back to Bruce or oh, Leap or Q&A. Q&A? Oh, Q&A, yes. It's yes. a good idea. Yes. Yep. Okay, good point. So audio, so we, we basically, I tell people that the visual aspect is about half the experience, audio is the other half of the experience, and, and narrative is the, the third half. Um, my math is not very good. Uh, the audio experience from day one has been a fully immersive 
audio experience. And the way we've done that is using an ambisonic microphone, a tetrahedral microphone. Um, with that, you can record a sound field, so you can hear the plane going overhead, and you hear the question coming from over there. And when you look, the, 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 the audio changes, so we have a uh, head-related transfer and uh, audio rotation in real time on your phone or on the Oculus, for, for that matter. Um, Ambisonics are good. There aren't very many post-production tools for that. Uh, so in addition to Ambisonics, we've done a partnership with Dolby where we support Dolby Atmos. And we, Dolby Atmos has a, it's basically 3D theater sound. And you know you can kind of imagine you know there's a your Mad, Mad Max or something and the car comes flying overhead and crashes behind you you can hear the sound behind you so there's a tool that allows you to then take the sound of the car and create a path an object object audio that, that is in 3D that, that gets rendered in the appropriate location when you're in a the theater and we can do exactly the same thing in your headphones on your phone now the the challenge with the theater is, of course, that when you look behind, there is no car. In VR, there is an actual car. So the beauty of it is that Atmos is actually kind of designed for VR, in, in my opinion. It's a very high-end uh, system, so we, we've only done it with a handful of productions. If you get the Gear VR and you get the Paul McCartney or the Black Mass uh, experience, that's that will be uh, in Dolby Atmos, and it is a truly significantly better experience than, than even ambisonic so yeah we spend a lot of time on audio it's just more like if you do a concert for example then you really want to you don't really want to use a microphone you want to use the board audio and remix it for VR and that's kind of uh, what we've been doing but that sort of adds to the cost of the production so any more questions with the new camera does it come out stitched already or is there a stitching post process so with the new camera, does it come out stitched? No, it doesn't come out stitched. You have to upload it into the cloud where it gets stitched for you. It's fully automated. You get a, you get to watch the raw footage right away. Um, if you want to do edits, then you can download the high resolution stitched versions that are that can be up to 8K per eye, which is overkill because nothing can display that and no editing tools exist that can edit that. But you know, so typically you edit in 4K per eye. And then you do your edits, and then you re-upload the master that then gets rendered out again for distribution. Because for distribution, you need multiple formats. You need low-res, low low-frame rate formats for low-end phones, and high-res, high-frame rate fo formats for high-end phones. You can do H.265 on the Gear VR and not on many other phones. So we automatically re-encode it for, for different streams and different stream qualities. So the bit rate varies. So you, you, we typically aim for 15 megabits, which is 4K um, streamed, and that you can watch a sort of progressive download. If you're on Wi-Fi, you can watch it immediately. Uh, if you're if you're on mobile, if you're on 4G, you can also watch it streamed. But you know when you're on a 3G connection, it'll have to buffer. Um, the, over time, when we go to it's a 265. You can get the same quality at probably half the bit rate, so like seven to eight megabits. Um, you know, over time, I think that the codecs will improve and the way we encode the video will also change because currently we're giving you the entire 360 degree sphere, which is a little bit of overkill because you're really only seeing 90 degrees of field of view or 100 degrees field of view. Uh, so there's some, you know, stuff that we're working on making that a little bit more efficient. There's a question there. Yeah. So there's a question about a light field camera. And so does it, everybody here knows what a light field is, right? Oh, there's people nodding their head. So anyway, a light field is basically, you know, you take a, it's all the light that is passing through a volume of space, right? So if you, you know, take a square centimeter and you imagine all the light rays that are going through that, 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 that's an infinite amount of information in principle, right? So, so you could never capture a light field in its entirety. What you can do is you can try to capture a sample of the light field. And any multi-lens camera is in principle a light field camera because it, it's, it's capturing multiple, it's a sample of the light field. It just depends how many cameras can you get away with. 
So when we started, we started with a design where we thought, well, we're going to use cell phone cameras and we're going to have hundreds of them and just, you know, paste them around the sphere and have as many cameras as possible. And that, that turns out to be, you know, A, very hard to implement and, you know, it's, it's also a waste because really what you want is you need cameras in the horizontal plane predominantly where you, have, where you need stereo and up and down is you just need for fill in because you can't really have stereo if your if your target is video so we we use light field techniques in our computation photography pipeline to interpolate camera angles between physical cameras so if you have two cameras one pointing here one pointing there you can actually use sort of various techniques to interpolate different camera angles or, or generate different views in between and once you've done that you have a more complete light field in which case you can then generate a left eye and a right eye view from radial imagery and that's kind of the approach we've taken uh, it works really well I mean that's the approach that Google copied from uh, 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 sorry that Google also is using um, <laughs> But yeah, that, that, that's why you, you try to have 16 cameras on the perimeter, uh, 16 GoPros, because if you do the math with the field of view and the, and the size of the, Go, or the, and the size of the camera, then it will turn out that you need 16 GoPros. That's why they picked that number. Um, any other questions? Bruce. Yeah. So uh, John and other cinematic VR uh, pioneers say that really focus on 360 degree video, which poses a lot of challenges, like you said, with lighting, where you put the crew, all of these things. And uh, is there a thought maybe to break away from that, like a 180 degree or 270 degree video that control the narrative a little more, or to uh, kind of ease that production difficulty? Yeah, I mean, so the question is like, should you do less than 360 degrees? You know, my opinion is no. Why would I get a three-cylinder car if I can have a four-cylinder car? You know, um, I, I think that we're, we, what we're trying to do is we're striving for the highest quality, most immersive experience that you can achieve. So I think you have to have the audience behind you. Because if I look behind me, I want to see what is supposed to be there, not you know, uh, some some black stuff. Now, in terms of narrative. I think that if you want to direct the user's attention, there's different ways to do that. You could use lighting, you can use sound, uh, you can use a storyline. One thing that works really well is you can point, you know, because people just automatically look where you, where you point. It's it's very compelling in VR. Also, eye contact is very important. If you're doing if you're doing a video and you treat the camera as a person, then just looking at the person, then looking there, and then looking back the viewer will automatically look where you look. It's just built into your brain that you, you follow people's gaze. And, you know, if you don't treat the camera as a person, so, you, you know, the, we call it first person uh, perspective, you, you take a third person perspective, then you need to make sure that you don't look at the camera because I don't know if you, if you guys saw this piece called Into the Wild that, that um, uh, Ted Chilowitz did. And there's a point where where, um, what's her face, um, Reese Witherspoon sits down in front of you and looks straight at you. And you're supposed to look behind you because she's looking at her mother, I think it is. But the problem is that if she's looking at me, I didn't realize there was somebody behind me. So she's making eye contact with me, which I thought was kind of a creative mistake. What they should have done is put the mother you know, to the side so that she's looking there and then I would have automatically look what is she looking at right so those are small things that you need to sort of learn to work with and you make lots of mistakes when you first start until you you know get better and better and better at it and that's kind of why we set up John's studio to help people you know do things and another thing that is kind of interesting about the camera when you talk about first person third person is that the camera that we have doesn't point it doesn't sort of go and stares at someone so people at a concert don't act as if they're in the picture. They look at the camera, they go, what's that? And then they ignore it. <laughs> so, it, it, well, it's important if you're trying to do sort of a, uh, you know, something about, you know, place shifting type of experience, right? Because you, you don't want people to act, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm in the picture. If you, if you have a traditional movie camera, that would be a, a big issue. Um, 
so anyway, th th those are just some, some interesting tidbits. Any more questions? That's one over there. One last one. Are we going to be a rental house like Panavision? No. That's a bad business. We're not in the camera business. We're not selling the camera. We're building a camera because we need one. And, and we're, we're building them in relatively small quantities. We're going to lease them to our partners and use them to create great VR experiences. We're, we, we will support other cameras. You know, we are, we're, we're working on partnerships with other professional grade VR cameras that are being built. We don't, you know, Neo is a great camera, it's the first VR camera, it's gonna be the best VR ca camera, it's gonna be badass, but it's not gonna be the only VR camera, and, and we really honestly don't care if there's a better one, we'll use that one. Um, we're a company that is making VR experiences, and that's, that's our focus. This is just a tool for us. So, no, we're not gonna be Panavision, although that is probably, that used to be a great business. Um, and we're not a camera company, we're a company that creates cinematic VR. So you're not going to sell them? No. Unless you pay as much money as Alex did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have <laughs> You're going to get one. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. All right. Right, we're going to transition to Leap Motion. They have a short presentation they're going to talk about with their new demo cockpit, um, which is exploring some new UI possibilities. So they're going to come up and uh, get that presentation set up. Uh, but quickly, I want to give uh, just an overall thanks to Jaunt VR. Uh, they've uh, we've been doing these things for over two years, and they've been here for most of them, uh, demoing and showing support and sponsoring events. Uh, so Jaunt has been really involved in the community, so we want to show our appreciation there. So thank you very much. We're very happy to hear about the update, and uh, just uh, thank you to Jaunt. All right. <laughs> Leap, come forth. <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, my name is Barrett Fox. I'm a front-end interaction engineer at Leap Motion. Um, they've let us out of the dungeon today to share with you uh, an experiment that uh, my teammate Daniel Plemons and I have been building. Um, we are exploring um, uh, a genre of games right now uh, of spaceship simulators. Um, you might think of the EVE Online's and the, the Elite Dangerouses and we're thinking about the kinds of things that you can do with your hands in those games. Um, we're seeing a lot of games out there that, um, in, this, in the sim genre and a lot of detailed games where you have kind of spreadsheets and space and you have a lot of detailed uh, interactions that you need to do. And we're gonna be demoing over in the corner there after the talks. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an, of an overview of what we're showing. We're doing an experimental demo, um, and we're, we're exploring a few things right now in VR. One is uh, Leap uh, looks at your hands, and we have a sensor that sees your hands, and we can add your hands into VR experiences. And what we're doing with this version of our demo is we're, we're showing an image of your hands inside virtual reality in 3D and the leap can see your hands in 3D, and we're bringing images of your hands into the virtual environment. So most augmented reality that you hear about out there is an object, a 3D virtual object floating in the real world space. Well, we have a real world, several real world objects that are floating in the VR space. So we're kind of uh, flipping the script on AR right now in this demo. Um, the other thing that we're experimenting with in the demo is um, is bringing in joysticks and in a lot of these space games you have these pretty elaborate joysticks that players are using and we've got a set of those and we're allowing you to seamlessly transition between these physical joysticks and using your hands to control things in the cockpit so um, 
one of the things that's really cool to, to share with you guys is that um, on the front end team, uh, we're just a tiny bit of leap. Um, we're getting a chance to experiment with a lot of UX and interaction and what happens when you use this hand tracking, what kind of things can you do with it in games. So we've been working on a series of widgets that use your tracked hands to let you press buttons and do sliders and spin knobs and these sorts of things. And uh, the kind of things that we're finding out right now is really, really exciting. We're doing a really rapid exploration of what happens if you put a button here and it's this big, what happens if it's this far away from you, and rinsing and repeating. And we're learning earnestly all of the different ways in which you can grab and manipulate things inside 3D environments right now. And we're rapidly iterating these 3D widgets and we're putting them in front of users and doing user testing and we're rinsing and repeating. And so we're creating a, a, a collection of reusable UI pieces that you can drag into your virtual scenes right now in Unity and enable your applications uh, to use your hands. Um, so in this cockpit, uh, we're going to let you fly around with joysticks but control it as though you're a spaceship pilot and, uh, and interact with menus around you in, in a HUD. Um, We've been working out uh, what we call massing, where we say, like, if we had a menu of widgets, where should it be? Should it be down here like a car dashboard? Should it be here like a motorcycle around you? And we're quickly mocking up things in Maya in the 3D animation package and bringing it into Unity and asking people with a helmet on to say, can you reach this? Can you reach this? And no, does this reach better? And um, we're working on ways to to trigger those menus in VR. Um, we were experimenting with just gaze-based triggering to bring these menus in around you, um, but we, we've been working on a way of a combination of your gaze and reaching out with your hand uh, to bring in these menus, and we'll let you try that out um, in the back there. So we'll be, we'll be demoing for a while here tonight to share with you. Um, and. Uh, uh, we can take questions in the back. If you have any questions right now, I can answer. Um, yes? We don't have anything to announce right that, uh, about that right now, but uh, you know that's a good question. We'll keep that conversation going, yeah. Same kind of answer. It's like uh, Daniel and I really work on the front end interactions and we're working on the widgets and the pieces and, and the UX. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of experimentation with uh, what kinds of things you can touch in gaming environments. Yes. Pardon me? Yeah. Yes, we are. We have um, on our website, we have a package of widgets that's packed uh, in with our Leap Motion Core assets. So you can download these widgets and use them in a Unity scene. One of the things that we've been working really hard to do is, is um, make it so these widgets can be wired into anything in your game application very, very quickly. So um, Daniel's done this pretty powerful eventing system in the widgets that allow you to drag in a 3D widget into a Unity scene, um, drag in a widget that is your hands in Unity, drag in a button or a slider, and in about oh, 10 lines of code, have that widget be controlling anything in your game. So um, it's not a boast. Uh, we, can, we can allow you to, in a couple of hours, bring a Leap controller into Unity scene um, and have widgets in it and be in VR with uh, uh, hands that control stuff in VR. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we are working on Unreal support and we have a first pass at that out right now. Yeah. Um, uh, Daniel can answer questions for you and, and Anthony and Cade and, and Martin and the crew here here from Leap as well. So uh, we've got a couple demo stations uh, set up and back. Um, and uh, if you're lucky, there's a flying robot in the cockpit and you can slap it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> thanks. Thanks very much. Well, that's exciting. You know, make sure to check that out. Uh, I think that's going to be one of the coolest applications of VR to be able to move your hands and then touch an actual thing that's in the virtual space like the joystick or driving wheel. 
Uh, that's pretty neat. Okay. Uh, so at this point, we are going to break up into the demo portion of SVVR, which is exciting. Uh, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we are going to be announcing the winners of the giveaway in about 30 minutes, so after the demo starts. So stick around. I want to make sure latecomers get their tickets and everyone's got their raffle ticket and all that good stuff. Uh, and then... Oh, oh, right, and we want to sneak something in. Uh, I will sneak something in, too. Um, I'm with Altspace VR. We're hiring, desperately. We got guys like this guy here. Not not for us, but there's guys like him. Yeah, we're ready. So we're hiring. Uh, we have lots of stuff going on. Go to altvr.com. Uh, we're looking for engineers of every persuasion. Uh, and also, I'm building a VR events team, road team. It's a weird job, but it's running events in VR virtually to get people excited about doing shit in VR. It's crazy. You should, if you like that, if it sounds good, please let me know. All right, so, uh, real quick. Real quick. So, we're going to run this Kickstarter, a new Kickstarter for VR Camp here coming up. So, uh, uh, I just, you guys just fake it. If you don't feel it, fake it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you who thinks VR Camp at Burning Man is a good idea? And I want everybody to go, yeah, all right? So, and then we'll we'll edit this and get it in the in the Kickstarter, all right? <laughs> so, like, uh, who who thinks that VR camp at Burning Man is a good idea? Yeah. Right? Look at that. Look at that. See? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah. All right. Burning Man. SVVR, collaboration, innovation, and fraud. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shane. That's awesome. Burning Man's going to be so crazy, dude. All right, excellent. Any more questions? Vive, touch, this is your last chance. I'm not going to answer them if you catch me. I'm just, this is it. All right, fine. Oh! Which is better, the Vive or the Rift? Ah, we're out of time. So now it's time for the demos. Oh, man, that is just so crazy. All right, everyone, it's demo time. Uh, here we go. I'm not answering that. Cool, thank you so much. We're going to try all the demos. We have Leap back there. We have John doing some stuff. Uh, Tactical Haptics is in the house. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and set up the... We got raffle tickets. Make sure to go up and get a raffle ticket here. Uh, probably going to set up a perception neuron if you guys want to check that out. So uh, explore, check it out.